Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Today in the video, we will see how to use Quad SPI in STM32. Quad SPI is mainly used to interface the external flash memory, and it's very fast compared to the regular SPI chips. For this reason, the Quad SPI flash memories can also be used as the internal flash memory of the microcontroller. Our focus will be on this part, how to use the flash memory as the internal flash. In this video, I will focus on the setup process, and how to read and write data to the external flash. The next video will cover the mapping of the external flash as the internal memory, and also how to load the application from it. STM32 microcontrollers mainly have three different types of flash memories. N25Q, MT25, and MX25. Out of these three memories, I have access to N25Q, and MT25. So I have written the codes for these two memories, but I will show you how to make it work for the MX25 also. As I don't have the access to MX25 series, I can't say if it will work for it. So let's start the video now. SD Microelectronics already have a GitHub tutorial on these memories. I will leave the link to this in the description. Here you can see, there are three QSPI drivers. I have also uploaded the drivers for two of them on my GitHub page. These files are slightly different, but I have kept the formatting same as that of the SD's drivers. Let's see how to make these work. Create a new project in Cube IDE. I am using F7508 discovery board for this tutorial. Give some name to this project, and click finish. First thing we are going to do is, set up the clock. Select the external high speed crystal for the clock. If you configure anything wrong here, the project won't work. So make sure you configure the right crystal frequency as per your board. As you can see, the N25Q can reach up to 108 MHz, we will take advantage of it. I am running the system at 216 MHz. Even if you run at a bit lower frequency, it's alright, since 108 is the maximum, it can also perform well at slightly lower frequencies. So the clock has been configured to run at 216 MHz. As you can see here in the datasheet, the Quad SPI is connected to the AHB1, which runs at 216 MHz also. So right now the Quad SPI clock is also 216 MHz, which we will reduce later, by using the prescaler. Alright the clock is configured now. If you are using Cortex-M7, enable the cache. Now we will go to the Quad SPI, and enable the Quad SPI lines for communication. This here is the schematics for the F7508 board, and here you can see, it only have one QSPI memory chip. This is why I can only use Bank 1 while enabling the Quad SPI. Next we need to make sure that the pin connection is correct, as per the schematics. I have said it a lot of times during the Ethernet videos, and some people still configured the wrong pins. Cube MX sometimes configures the wrong pins for these modules, so you need to cross-check the pins with the schematics. Then we need to make sure that the pins are configured to run at highest possible frequency. Press Ctrl A to select all the pins, and go below, and change the output speed to very high. Now let's configure the parameters. The QSPI clock is 216 MHz right now, and this N25Q can run at 108 MHz max. So we need to use the prescaler of 2, 
to bring the QSPI clock to 108 MHz. Here we will enter 2-1, that is 1. This configuration we are doing is for the single transfer rate mode. Just set the FIFO threshold to 4. Next is the sample shifting. It also depends on the mode we are using. For the dual transfer rate, there will be no shifting, and for single transfer rate, there will be shifting by half cycle. Flash size depends on the memory size. For example, I have the 128 megabits, which is 16 megabytes of flash storage. 2 to the power 24 gives us the 16 megabytes. So the flash size will be 24 minus 1, that is 23. Chip select high time, let's keep it to 6 cycles. Clock mode should be low. Flash ID is 1, since there is only one flash memory. Dual flash is disabled, as there is no second flash available. That's it for the configuration. One last thing we need to do is, create separate files for the peripherals. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I am trying to keep it as per the SD's QSPI drivers, and that's how they have put it. Enable it here. Now click save to generate the project. If you check the QSPI drivers by the ST, they have separate files for QSPI.C and .H. So if you want to use these drivers, you need to put this code in the user code 0 part. And the rest of them in the user code 1 part. And the same goes for the header file also. You need to put these functions, wherever they are defined in these files. Of course you need to change this memory size. Now if you take a look at my GitHub, the functions are almost the same. The only change I have made is, I have added the read function, so that we can read the data from a particular address in the memory. Now to make it work, you need to download these files first. I have them here. Now we will copy the N25Q header file in the project folder. The rest we will modify. Let's start with the QSPI.C file. Alright, first we will put these functions in the user code 0. And then we will copy all these in the user code 1. Now let's see the header file. The write function seems to be defined twice. Let me delete one, and I will update the GitHub for this. We need to copy these private defines only. So that's it. 
I forgot to include the N25Q header file here. In the N25Q header file, you can see the memory size is defined here. You can change it as per the memory size for your QSPI device. Let's build it once to check for any errors. Alright we are good to go. We will initialize the QSPI first. Then erase the entire chip. Then we will write data to the memory. We need to define the data first. Let's create another variable to store the data read from the memory. So we will write this data into the QSPI at the address 0. Then we will read the data from the same address. The write and read address is 0, which means that it will be the start of the QSPI address, which in most cases is 90 million hexa. I am saying most cases because there are very few microcontrollers, where the QSPI address starts at, a 0 million hexa. Few warnings, but that's alright, let's debug it now. I am putting a breakpoint at while, and one in the error handler. Just in case if any of the functions fail, it will hit the error handler. Let's run it now. We hit the while loop, which means the functions were executed alright. Read buff do contain the data that we stored in the memory. We can also check the data in the cube programmer. Just connect the controller. Now click the external loader. Search for your controller here. You can see that the QSPI address starts at 90 million hexa. I didn't uncheck the others, let me do that quickly. Alright, now it's fine. Now we will enter the QSPI address here, and hit enter. And here you can see the data that we stored in the flash memory. Some of you guys always have problems while storing the numerical values. I will show you the simplest approach to it. Let's say the number is 1234. Create one buffer also. Now we will use the sprintf to convert the number to the string. And we will store this string into the flash memory. Include the stdio for the sprintf. Just ignore these warnings, and let's debug it. Here we hit the breakpoint. And you can see the string of the number that we stored. You can later convert it back to the integer format. I know this is not the effective way of storing the numbers, but the purpose of these QSPI tutorials is not to store the data into the flash anyway. We will use this flash memory as the internal flash memory, so as to compensate for the low flash in some microcontrollers. For storing data into the external flash, I will make another video using the wideband ICs, as they are widely available, and we can simply use SPI for that purpose. Still, if you want to store the numbers into the flash, you need to use the union method. You can check out the EEP ROM code on my GitHub, and see how I have used union to store the number and floats. Now similar to this N25Q, 
There is the code for MT25. You need to follow the same steps here too. If you check the initialization function, I have kept everything similar to what I did in the N25Q. And in the header file too, the similar function are being used. I have H745 discovery board, which have the two flash memories, each 512 megabits in size. So I have modified this particular code to work with dual flash also. The steps are similar to what you saw in this video. Just in case if you want to see the working for MT25 also, let me know in the comment section. I will make another video for it. Or else in the next video, we will see the memory mapped mode, where these external flash memories will be treated as the internal flash. We will also see how to load the application from these external flash memories. That's it for today. The code is on the GitHub, so get it from there. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.